I swear to God, this plant is not dead. I just watered it. It's gonna perk back up. You're gonna see it in the next video. There's literally dozens of plants in my house that are alive, okay? <laughs> my mom's a horticultural technician. It runs in the genes. I've, I've got this. <laughs> hey, you guys, so for today's video, I thought uh, it might be, I don't know, a little interesting if I went through my recent purchases and uh, told you guys whether or not I felt like it was worth it uh, or if it was a waste of money. As you guys know, I'm no longer accepting PR, uh, so I've been doing a lot more shopping lately, but I am trying really, really hard to not over purchase because I really love to go into Sephora and just like buy all of the things that I have no ability to use. So I'm trying to cut down on that a little bit and uh, purchase things a little more slowly and um, things that I know that I can incorporate a little bit more easily into my routine. But I wanted to go through my recent stuff and just kind of tell you guys my thoughts on it all. So let's do it. First things first. Ugh, man. So Giorgio Armani came out with this like A contour line and there's also an A highlight and an A blush. They're all liquid formulas. And uh, I, I saw this contour and I was like, dang, that looks right up my alley because you know I like a cream contour situation. And if you can see it on my hand there, it just looked so like majestically sheer and beautiful. And I was like, damn, that's gonna look nice as hell. And I also really liked the tone of it when I was swatching it in Sephora. I felt like it was um, not as red toned as some other bronzers are. And uh, I thought it was gonna be me in this bronzer forever. I'm wearing it right now. I'm also wearing blush. Um, and I did put it over top of my foundation. This contour is so sheer. Ugh, I hate saying this. It's almost too sheer. <laughs> so I have it like right here and I have it obviously here as well. Um, but I just, I don't know, man. I feel like when I apply it on my face, it ends up looking quite red. Well, actually, damn, kind of looking in this mirror, I feel like it looks kind of dope. It's just very, very light. Like I think that, um, I, I'm so used to seeing more dimension and color on my face that I feel like I'm really not used to a product that's like this sheer. I'm going to keep kind of at it and keep trying it. I feel like it's definitely something that I would wear with lighter makeup. Like I can't see myself reaching for this when I'm wearing more dramatic eye makeup and stuff like that just because I don't feel like it would make my face look balanced enough for me. So this one for me right now is like a 6.5. I feel like I can't get fully into it. I was really hoping to like love it so much. I had high hopes. It's kind of like a Glossier skin tint situation. It's like so sheer that you're like, holy fuck, like what am I paying for? But then you're like, catch a glimpse in the mirror and you're like, am I a model? I definitely like right now wouldn't repurchase this. It's not like anything that I'm like writing home about, you know? I picked up the new Nude Sticks uh, Nudies Matte. So this is the color Sunset Strip. Hold on. Oh, that Sunset Strip right there. And then that is the shade Sunkissed over here. I really like Sunset Strip a lot. I think it's a really beautiful like coral um, and it blends out to be a really, really nice sheer pop of color on the face, but it's nothing in comparison to Sunkissed. Oh my God, I just, I love this color. I don't know why, it's just so like, mm, it's like a brick kind of terracotta color. It's everything I want a blush to be and nothing I want a contour to be. <laughs> It kind of gives me like warm soul vibes without the shimmer and obviously it's a cream, not a powder. If there's any way for me to describe that shade, it's balanced. Like I feel like it doesn't lean too far in one direction. It's honestly just, it's perfect. I feel like it's very common for um, companies to come out with blushes that are like really bright pink, really bright red, really bright fuchsia, shit like that. Um, and this to me is more so like a skin tone. You know what I mean? Like it's gonna look really beautiful on actual real skin. Whereas even colors like this, I mean, they blend out so beautifully, but that is like a visible blush kind of thing. Whereas this one, I feel like you can apply super, super lightly and it just, it actually looks like you're flushed. It's just so beautiful. I love that product. Ooh, then I got the uh, Makeup Forever Ultra HD Self Setting Concealer. I had been seeing a bunch of ads about this on uh, Instagram and I actually was recommended it uh, by a friend of mine, Jess. I actually quite like this concealer. I definitely don't agree that it's self setting. I find that it creases on me almost immediately. And I, a lot of the times won't set my concealer just because I don't find that I need to very often. And I don't love using powder where I don't have to. But this one I find does crease for me right away. Even if I'm applying a lot less or a little more or whatever kind of thing, I can't seem to find a balance that doesn't um, 
turn out in creasiness. <laughs> I also feel like this guy's a little bit more sheer than what most people would probably be used to based on, you know, what's kind of on the market in terms of concealers right now. I think it's beautiful. It looks really, really gorgeous on the skin. I remember um, the original HD foundation was one of my favorites forever. And it kind of reminds me of that. It's not like this really, really intense coverage, but it's basically like just enough, so to speak. But all that said, I've been using it and really liking it. It's a good like day-to-day -day concealer for me. I don't like concealers that are really, really intensely, uh, full coverage because I am wearing more sheer coverage foundations these days. So if I'm wearing something that's really pigmented underneath my eyes, it's kind of like this strip of concealer and then like my sheer skin and you can see my acne and stuff. <laughs> so day to day I do like this, but if you are somebody that uh, gravitates more towards a super full coverage concealer, this might not be the one for you. Ooh, oh my gosh. My best pal Alyssa can attest to this, but I, <laughs> I swatched this Every time I go into Sephora, I shit you not. Like I just, I just am drawn to this displayer and I'm like, mm, how majestic. And then I don't get it every time, but I finally picked it up. These little uh, Kaja eyeshadow stacks. So I got the rose water kind of stack and then I got the orange blossom stack. The reason I didn't pick these up is because I felt like they're so beautiful, but I was like, am I actually gonna reach for them? Am I gonna wear them? And honestly, like, are they gonna be something that's so uniquely different from anything else I have in my collection, you know? So those are kind of the swatches there. I have this brown one on my eyes today. I do, I, I quite like it, but I think it's one of those products that I feel like, can I live without? 100%. For me, I love like additional little eye products like um, Tarte Chrome Paints or the Marc Jacobs like Holiday Sequin Eyes, Hourglass Scattered Light, shit like that. It's my jam because I feel like it adds something more to the look that you can't get in a pressed eyeshadow. So I was kind of hoping that I would have that feel with these, that they would be something that I would kind of add to any look to amp it up. And I do feel like it does that, but not in a way that any other eyeshadow wouldn't. So I don't know personally for me if it's something that I would like remember to dig out of my collection. So I like these, I think they're beautiful and they apply really nicely and they stay on quite well. And they have a really nice, beautiful, fuck man, actually that is kind of nice. Maybe I'm being a little hard on these pals. I just, I'm just, I'm not like 100% blown away. I like them, I'm going to use them and I'm gonna leave them out so I remember to use them. But I don't think this is something that has a unique enough look to it. I don't know, man. I'm gonna keep trying them out and uh, I'll, I'll keep you guys updated. I was ecstatic about this. This is the Dior Forever Skin Glow Foundation. Anytime that something says glow, I'm like, yes, this was made specifically for me. Thank you so much for looking out. Unfortunately, <laughs> Um, this foundation wasn't actually on display yet, but I went into Sephora and I was like, do you guys have it? And they were like, well, we have it, but like, it's not out. And I was like, but can I have it? And this sweet woman, she went into the back and she brought out all of the uh, shades for my friend and I. So we couldn't swatch them because they didn't have like their display set up yet. So I was kind of just eyeballing it. Um, I feel like actually this shade looks better on me now than it did when I bought it. I was a little bit paler at the time. So the shade was like super, super peachy on me. I, oh gosh, I don't know what it is. There's something about this foundation that doesn't like blow me away. I think it looks really, really nice. Like I enjoy the way that it looks, but I just, I literally can't put my finger on it. I have no words to describe why it's not like a home run for me. I'm gonna keep trying it out. I like to kind of toy around with my foundations because as I'm sure many of you know, I love mixing my foundations with like other foundations or serums. Just because when it comes to foundations, I really don't feel like any formula is like perfect for one person's skin. You know what I mean? Because even if the color matches really well, sometimes the finish isn't what you want or the coverage isn't what you want or whatever. So I feel like you always have to toy around with it just a little bit to kind of make it what you want. So that foundation for me right now is like a seven out of 10 kind of thing, but I'm definitely going to keep playing with it and see how it goes. Um, so I'll keep you guys updated on that one as well. This one does have a fairly strong scent. It's super common among like luxury brands to add like a ton of fragrance to foundations to everything really. I don't, I feel like it looks good. I don't know. Maybe I'm just being a hater today. Kind of. I feel like it. Ooh, ooh. Magnifique. So I think I talked about it recently, um, but I was using the uh, Dior Lip Maximizer. This is the original one, I think. It's 001. I love this shade and I love how it makes my lips look. Like I just feel like it makes them look so plump and so beautiful. It has kind of like a minty feel to it, but it's not super minty smelling. Like it smells minty when you first put it on, but it doesn't linger. And I hate, I hate mint scent, but this is, 
horrifically expired. <laughs> like I should have, I should have gotten rid of this. Just, I mean, this has seen like a couple boyfriends. So if that gives you any indication, you know? So I went to Sephora and I was going to pick up another one and then I saw this color. I think this was called Rosewood, but it's 012. And this shade, I'm wearing it right now. It reminds me kind of of like a more sheer version of uh, the original Fenty Beauty gloss. It's just so nice. Like it's not too like bluey pink. It has that kind of nice warmth to it. So it's really, really flattering. And I feel like it would work across a really wide range of skin tones. The sheerness to it is perfect because it doesn't look um, like patchy or shitty on your lips. It just looks like a really nice wash of color. And when it wears off, it's not super noticeable. It's really easy to like reapply without like thinking about it or looking at it. So I've just been so in love with this one lately. I've been using it every day since I got it. The people that have been watching my channel for a long time or that know me well, I'm ashamed. <laughs> your jaws are gonna drop at this one. That's probably a little dramatic, probably not. Ugh. My secret shame. <laughs> if you are new here, <laughs> I am not the biggest Morphe fan. This dates back like, like five or six years ago when I was literally just starting out like small, small, small baby influencer. Morphe reached out to me and they sent me a bunch of their brushes. They sent me a bunch of their eyeshadow palettes like at the time what they had. And the brushes I wasn't super impressed with. I just felt like all of them were kind of like cheaply made and like they weren't really just like doing anything for me that would make them replace any of my other brushes. And then the eyeshadows I got a really, really bad reaction to, which for me is like super rare, never happens. I don't usually have like a problem with um, any kind of like eye products. So I stopped using the brand altogether. And in that time, um, I've had a lot of people kind of like ask me for reviews on Morphe products because I know they're so popular. They're such a huge brand now. And I kind of was of the mindset that like mm, the product has probably changed and it's probably gotten better, but like nothing they've come out with has been so groundbreaking that I've been moved to um, purchase it myself. So the Jaclyn Hill palette came out and that was one of the first Morphe products that I had tried in like years and years and years. And I liked that palette, but I definitely didn't feel like it was worth the cost for like paying for the shipping and the duties and all that kind of stuff to bring it into Canada. For some reason that review was like super poorly received. Like I lost thousands, thousands of subscribers from it. I feel like it just struck a bad chord with people. I'm coming to understand why if what we're comparing that palette to is like this. So this is the Morphe 350 palette. I've heard just countless people um, rave about this palette and say that it's like phenomenal. It's like their everyday palette, blah, blah, blah. And Morphe recently came to Canada and I had kind of like looked at the displayer here and there and I was like, eh, I don't know. <laughs> I saw this Reddit thread and someone was like, now that Morphe's in Canada, I wonder if all the Canadian beauty gurus like Jamie and Alana and Samantha are gonna start shilling Morphe. And I was like, Reddit. I thought you knew me better than that. Um, but anyways, I had been walking past the Morphe thing a few times and I was like, ah, fuck, you know what? Maybe I'm being a hater bitch. Not uncommon for me. And I was just kind of thinking like, you know what? Maybe it'd be nice to have this like big ass palette full of neutrals like this, all these colors just really speak my name and something that's cheaper. So I'm not gonna be super upset if it's getting like tossed around, if I'm traveling with it and stuff like that. I was just going to privately purchase this, never talk about it, never express that I had done this because I was deeply ashamed. And even when I checked out at Sephora, the chick at the cashier line was like, "Ugh, Morphe makes the best eyeshadows. And I was like, <clears throat> what's my total? Um. I, I have to be honest, you guys know, I'm already not the biggest like Morphe fan. I try my very best not to be biased. I had no intentions of talking about this on my channel or using it at all. I was just gonna kind of use it privately um, because I just, I really don't align with Morphe's whole sitch. It's not that all of the, I feel, I'm really like leading up to like my thoughts about this palette. It's not that all of their products are like horrible shitty products. It's just that they are not worth the amount of talk that they receive. These are products that I would recommend to somebody that doesn't want to allot a ton of budget towards makeup. They do the trick, but for me in comparison to all the other stuff on the market right now, I just can't see myself ever being like, wow, this just blows it out of the park better than every eyeshadow palette. And it's just always irked me that a lot of people haven't caught on to the fact that Morphe is being talked about at such 
an extreme rate in comparison to any other brand. And there's a reason for that. <laughs> All that said, I genuinely was feeling like, okay, I probably need to put this feeling to bed. And I'm sure that this shadow palette is gonna be absolutely fine because 99% of eyeshadows that you buy are like totally fine, usable, great, whatever. So I was not going into this with the intentions of being like, oh, this is gonna suck. I was like, oh, this will be a good day-to-day -day palette. I'm flabbergasted. That's dramatic. <laughs> I am, I'm, I'm really surprised um, by how highly this has been talked about. I think the selection of colors is great, especially if you're somebody that wears neutrals day to day, because for me, I, I just do. Like I run through neutrals like crazy because it's basically all I wear. So I've, I've tried these eyeshadows over top of dry primer like I normally do. So I would put my primer down, I would um, powder it with like a skin tone uh, powder, and then I would go in with my eyeshadow. I felt like the shadows didn't show up at all. It took a lot of time and effort to like work up the shades and stuff like that, which isn't the worst thing in the world. Um, if you prefer eyeshadows, they're not as pigmented, so they're not as finicky. But I also tried this over the P. Louise base wet, like without setting it and stuff like that, which um, should have realistic kind of like amped up the pigmentation, but I still felt like it was falling so short. It just seems like I cannot get these shadows to build up to a point where I'm like, okay, that's, that's the color I was expecting from that shadow. If you're looking at this palette in comparison to my skin, a lot of these shades are actually quite dark for my skin tone. Like these two rows, sure, but even something like that shows up a lot deeper on my skin tone because I'm quite fair. So all of these shades should show up like really fucking dark on my skin and normally they would but for instance this is the shade that i'm wearing in my crease and i feel like the advantage of big palettes like this is that you have such a selection of colors so you're kind of not going to be missing what you need especially if you're traveling and stuff it will kind of negate from you needing to bring a second palette but so many of these colors end up looking so similar on my eye because they all are so sheer when you're applying them. I haven't gotten a chance to play around with a lot of the shimmers yet, but I'll have to kind of try them out. This is a palette, like I said, that I would recommend sooner to somebody that doesn't want to allot, you know, a ton of their budget towards makeup expenses, or somebody who's like maybe a beginner, you don't have a huge makeup collection, but you want to kind of, you know, flesh it out. And I'm not someone that's like huge on pigmentation. Like I think there's kind of been this influx of eyeshadows that are like, really, really intensely, intensely pigmented. And for me, I would rather have an eyeshadow that I can kind of build up, like, you know, the original Makeup Geek shadows are a good example of that for me. They didn't swatch in a way that was like mind blowing, but they built up beautifully. You could work it up to the color that it was in the pan, but I feel like being someone who doesn't care that much about pigmentation, I struggle with these. And I feel like even with time and like building it up and using denser brushes and going over top of a wet primer and all that kind of stuff, I still feel like I struggle to get the eyeshadow colors to show up the way that I'm expecting from those shades. So in conclusion, I'm still gonna be trying to um, use up that palette and kind of incorporate it where I can and stuff like that. I'm hoping I'll be able to find a way to uh, make it look more intense so that the colors are a little bit more true to what I see in the pan. If you guys uh, have this palette and you have a like specific way that you love to apply it or specific brushes even that you love to apply with, definitely let me know. Um, I don't want it to go to waste, so I'm still gonna be trying to implement it as much as I can into my day-to-day uh, -day stuff and try and work through it a little. Now that I've tried that palette, which is like an updated kind of palette um, in their range, it's not something from six years ago, I can understand why people are so in love with the Jaclyn Hill palette because that formula is like just eons above this formula for me. This last one, I'm so sorry, Christine. I went back and forth on getting this palette for so long. This is the Pat McGrath uh, Bronze mm -hmm, so that, mm, br mm, Mothership V palette. I would see people wearing this and I'd be like, what are you wearing? And they'd be like, the Mothership palette. And I'd be like, fuck. And then I'd go into Sephora and I'd swatch it and I'd be like, fuck. And then I'd talk to Christine about it and she was like, it's the best. And I was like, fuck. And I finally caved, <laughs> I bought it. Um, ugh. I feel the same way about this Pat McGrath palette that I feel about all of my Pat McGrath palettes. And that is that the colors are beautiful. They're unique. The texture is really different from what's on the market, but I don't use it. 
<laughs> I literally keep, so I don't keep a ton of makeup like on my desk. I kind of keep what I'm like using day to day or stuff that I'm like planning to review or use in a video or whatever. But I keep all of my Pat McGrath palettes like on hand because I want them to be front and center. So I remember to use them all the time. And I, I just don't, I don't know what it is. Like I, oh, okay. She just wanted to take a little look around up here. I, this is just my life now. Every time I wear it, I love it. Like I think it looks really, really beautiful and I'm like super ecstatic about it. And I'm like, ooh, I should wear this more. So I just, I do like it. This is the worst, Kuma. <laughs> like it's the best, but it's not conducive to me putting out content, you know? I'm fine, I'm happy to spend money like coin on products. Like I, I love buying luxury products. Like I love the whole consumer experience of getting something with like really beautiful, luxurious packaging and shit like that. I feel like the cost for me is just so hard to swallow because I never end up using them. Oh. And with this palette, I don't know why I'm having such a hard time because for the other palettes, I feel like I have a hard time um, kind of coming up with how I would want to use them day to day. Like if I was using them for a more kind of like creative look, then totally fine, no problem. But just for kind of wearing on the reg, you know, they don't pop out in my mind. But with this guy, I just have no excuses. It's so easily laid out. It's so just kind of obvious what colors pair well together. Um, and it's so kind of like easy to create a look out of this. So the formula is great. The color selection's gorgeous. Love everything about it, but I haven't. So I don't know, man. I'm really wanting to get more use out of these palettes. So I'm kind of thinking about incorporating one of them into a project throwback video. I know a lot of you guys have been asking if I'm gonna continue that series. And yes, I am. I've just been kind of traveling and all over the place. So I didn't want to uh, be doing that series while I wasn't able to post as consistently as I like to. So if you guys are interested in that, definitely let me know because I would, um, I would love to get more use out of this palette. I think it's beautiful uh, and I really like it, but I just, I just haven't been using it as much as I, I should. So you guys, that is everything for me. Those are all my recent purchases and my little thoughts on them. I'd love to know what you guys have been picking up recently if you felt like it was a dud or you felt like it was something that uh, became one of your faves. Thank you guys for hanging out and watching. I'll see you next time. Peace out.